We're back to square one, maintenance mode. Huh? But what's the real gift to the Guru? To share your realization of Krishna consciousness with others. So, before we take any questions, I would like to hear from each and every one of you a couple of words. Hmm? What it is that gets you inspired? What gets you out of bed? What's your reason to be here? Huh? The raison d'être. What gets you moving? Why are you going on this marathon? Why are you giving prophets books to others? Not five or ten minutes, just, you know, a few words, a sentence or two. Just, you know, your credo, your motto. Like when you go up to each other, you ask people, so what's the story? What's the news? Right? What's going down? What's happening? But instead of that, you could ask people, okay, what's the mantra? What's the motto? What gets you inspired? What's your, you know? What's your inspiration? That's what we want to know from each other. Huh? To be inspired in Krishna consciousness. So please, tell us. <laughs> you already told us. So, I already spoke. Yes. For me, it's, uh, it's Prabhupada's life, Prabhupada's sacrifice, what Prabhupada, what he put in, like every bit of energy. And, to, you know, to kind of repay that in like an insignificant way you can. And obviously, distributing books was very dear to Prabhupada. So, when I go out on the street, that's what I meditate on. When I'm having a tough time, I meditate on what tough times Prophet went through and uh, it all becomes insignificant. Because you see the perspective. You see our tough times and you see his tough times and it just seems like so puny and trivial, you know? Like the sheer amount of magnitude of what he was facing and what we are facing. Thank you for that. Yes? Uh, one reason is like to please Krishna. Another thing is that when That's you a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like number one reason. Yeah. And uh, another thing I think that when I'm going out in books is that you know people are living their life, they're doing what they're doing, but they don't really know about spiritual life and they're just making a decision based on what they're doing. So at least if they read the book, they have some insight. So in some way that will inspire them to take at least some form of spiritual life from which they'll be able to get more realization. Thank you. Because otherwise they'll be missing the point. Yeah. They made all this journey, and not just from India to England, but they made all the journey through all the 8,400,000 species for nothing, you know? It took them a long while to get to where they are right now. They, we are all far away from home, you know? And if we just miss this opportunity, that's like really terrible, right? It's like traveling from here to Tirupati, getting up on the mountain, waiting in line without having darshan, you know, without seeing Balaji. Can you imagine that? You go through all the ordeal, through all the... without actually... and we should feel like that. A person's got the human form, but if he doesn't actually get to the point of taking up spiritual life, then it's just wasted, you know? So much waste. So if we're ecologically, you know, conscious, and we hate to see waste, we don't, you know, otherwise this person will just turn into fertilizer. It's just a life wasted. Thank you. Yes. As Thomas says as well, to inspire us to... Not what somebody else said, what you, yeah. what you the feel. Same thing. I feel. The same thing, I feel that... Uh, inspires other devotees how to sacrifice their own time, sacrifice their own desires, and to, just, to, to, to fill Krishna's desires. As well, that Prabhupada, how he sacrificed his own life as well to give out all time, everything, to read down these books. He was really to pushing as well to discipline these books. He wants to please his spiritual master, to, because his spiritual master says to discipline these books, discipline to all the world, everyone. This really inspires that, because Prabhupada wants to do that. Thank you. Um, I feel the same as I'm in there. <laughs> but also, um, to know that I'm part of something that is uh, you know, huge, like uh, the biggest revolution in mankind. You know? Yes, I ask people, are you a tourist or a terrorist? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to be part of something big. Everybody wants to be, you know, part of the winning team. Everybody wants to be where the action is. 
So this is where the action is. You might say, you know, how can you say so? We're 10 guys here, 15, you know, everybody's out there doing something different, saying sense gratification, kijai. But you know, there's three-fourths in the spiritual world. There's only one-fourth of us, the dummies, who are here in the material world. So if we tell people, we are giving out these books here today, we don't just mean us and the other two guys on the block, but this is the whole Guru Parampara, this is everybody in the spiritual world. So there's many of us. And this is just one little insignificant person right here in front of you, which just get blown away by all this energy. Yes. Please. <laughs> That's okay, you've got realization. What gets you inspired? That's good. No, that's nice. Thank you. What about you? Um, um, I guess I can uh, say that uh, I'm not be a very extroverted person and able to deal with people. A lot of devotees are not like that. They're very shy, introverted, kind of timid. So it's not depending on nature. Your nature can change. I've seen people blossom. I've other people see, uh, you know, get withdrawn. There's different phases also in people's lives. Like many of you are still very young and energetic and you like running around and talking to people. As one gets a little older, one likes it a bit more quiet, right? And a bit more recluse and less, you know, rah-rah kind of thing. So don't be, you know, like my nature is, I can talk a mile a minute and it's pretty convincing for the most part of it. But that's not surrender. And that doesn't attract Krishna. Also, if you just take a lot of books and give out a lot of books, that's not just necessarily attracting Krishna. It's about your sincerity. It's about your intensity of your desire to please Prabhupada and Krishna. That's what's attracting Krishna. Because this, you know, he, he's already God. He already got everybody worshipping him. So he's not dependent on our 5 or 50 or 500 books. He's looking for the love. He's looking for the intensity. So if we think that we can force Krishna to reveal himself to us, because of our great endeavor of whatever it is, then uh, good luck. 